First of all, Reverend Blue, thank you for talking with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, May 14th really changed Buffalo forever. Uh, and you're the chair of the May 14th Memorial Commission. How do you start choosing a site, start the discussions with, what do we do to remember these victims? Well, one of the things that I told uh, the commission is that we only have one time to get this right. Uh, there's no do-overs. We have to make sure uh, that we engage our community. So we will be having uh, community discussions, a survey, uh, and we will have a website in which uh, people can uh, log on to and share their concerns, share their comments, because this is a healing process. Uh, and we all need to heal from this. It, it's not just the Jefferson community, the East Buffalo community. Uh, this has ravaged our entire city. Uh, no one has ever thought something like this would ever happen in the city of Buffalo. So we look at areas of where do we start. Uh, first of all, uh, we can't give you a, a particular place where the monument's going to be because we're still working on the monument. Or how big will the monument be? Will it be enclosed? Uh, those are key questions uh, that we have to figure out. Uh, and that will, again, be with community support. Nothing will be done void of the community because this, again, has ravaged our entire city, especially the Jefferson Avenue East Side community. There are so many challenges inherent in what you just described because you have the gamut, right, of people who uh, have trauma and a lot of it obviously having to do with May 14th, but then there's also a generational aspect yes. of disparities that have always existed in East Buffalo, and you can't really ignore that, can you, when you're putting this memorial together? You, you can't. That's why this has to be a living monument, something that people will not only look at and reflect, but also look at and see what we can do next uh, to, to overcome uh, the trauma. Uh, we have to educate, it's, it's going to be an educational piece as well. So it just can't be a statue. It has to be areas of reflection. It has to be areas of uh, what we're going to do. It has to be areas of people coming together and having those moments in which they can, if they have to cry, cry. This is the time to do it. Uh, we have to get this out. We have to be able to heal. And I do know that healing, it's not going to happen in a day, uh, a month, a year. It, it's going to be, uh, healing's going to come f for a long time. And this is what our community needs to do, uh, continue to come together, that the healing can, can be helpful. And it's, it's all about coming together. And we have been uh, coming together for other reasons, but this is a reason in which all of Buffalo, all of Western New York, and the entire world, we're tired of these shootings. We're tired of this racial, racist, racial uh, divide that we have. Uh, we're tired of white supremacy. Uh, those are things that are continuing to divide and, and put a cancer into our community. And we have to eradicate hate. Um talking about um, focusing on the community's past. Um, the shooting, again, highlighted so many injustices, inequities, and Governor Hochul has led the charge with, I think it's $50 million in targeted investment. Um, what do you see, though, as the community's long-term needs? I mean, the, the memorial's going to play a very important role in that healing, but as a leader, as the president of the NAACP, I'm sure you see that there are a lot of structural, systemic changes and needs that um, need as much attention. Absolutely. Give me your top five, if you will. Infrastructure in the Jefferson area community. There needs to be more uh, grocery stores and businesses in the Jefferson area community. I remember growing up, and it was full of businesses, uh, automotive, uh, schools. Uh, we had a couple of grocery stores down from William and Jefferson on down. So, I mean, there's a, a lot that can play into that uh, development, housings. We need to make sure that the infrastructure is sound and that the houses that are pre-existing are being able to be taken care of with roofs and, and foundations and, and siding and windows. Those are things that need to happen. 
uh, what has transpired is a, a, a disconnect. We, we say we have funds available, but now accessing those funds have become problematic. So there needs to be more of a streamlined way in which the residents can access those funds, the seniors can access those funds. Uh, they've built Jefferson, they've seen Jefferson uh, crumble and they wanna continue to rebuild Jefferson. So uh, we look at infrastructure, we look at housing, uh, we look at businesses that need to come uh, into the community. Uh, we need more, better transportation um, and our schools. Uh, we need to make sure that our schools are top notch and that we have individuals who care about our children because our children are not only the coining the phrase are our future, but our children are the now. We can't wait for them to grow up. We need to teach them now how to uh, deal, how to develop, uh, in the areas in which they want to develop in. We have some, in, we have some ingenious children uh, and, and, and given the opportunity to grow, uh, they will be phenomenal. They will, they will help rebuild, but we have to give them the tools. Uh, I told my children when they were going to school, uh, I'll, I'll help support you, I'll, I'll give you the tools, but you have to, you have to work the tools. And, and that's what we have to do. Uh, we have a lot of individuals who are uh, social media has kind of disrupted uh, our community. Uh, Hollywood has disrupted our community because whenever you're seeing African Americans or minorities, they've been in roles that are not glamorous. They've been pimps, prostitutes, hoes, uh, drug dealers. Uh, they've been all of the low life things in which uh, they have depicted African American and minorities. But we have to turn that around because if you look at a lot of the inventions in America that have been by African Americans. And we need to make sure that our history is taught in school because all we're hearing is a, a whitewash history, but we need to make sure that the presence of African American and minorities are in our, our books so our children can read about the accomplishments in which their ancestors have uh, contributed to America and not just giving a one-sided view. So. Those are the top five things that I think if we continue to work there, that we can uh, overcome a lot of the woes that are in our society now. You speak with a lot of urgency. You're, you're keenly aware, you're a native of East Buffalo, so you're aware of the challenges that exist. And we've heard expressed, even just within this one year, um, frustration. You had mentioned people not being able to access the funds that are available. What do you say to those people who feel like there should have been more done already? They're anxious. You know, they feel like they've waited long enough for some of these changes to happen. What do you say to them at this point? Well, I sympathize with them because they're angry at the process. The process has not been welcoming, and that's what we have to change. We have to change the process because Grandmama may not have all that documentation. I mean, she's grandma and grandpa been around for a long time, and some of those papers have deteriorated so, or they may not uh, be able to access those papers, and we have to make it easier. We have to streamline that process for access uh, to funds to help do the things that need to be done. Uh, Buffalo, is, we, we have a history of lead pipes in our whole community. Uh, so when you look at the infrastructure of the, of the east side, uh, it needs to be improved. And, and I want to say to them, uh, we have a process in which we have, in which we can use, and that is the voting process. That is the advocacy process. That is to get into the, the face of those who are making decisions for us and let them know these are some of the things that we need, uh, not now, but right now. So it's very, it's very urgent that we are proactive uh, in the process to get things done. Uh, from the governor to every political uh, entity, every political individual, we have to get out and vote. And not only that, teach our young children how to vote. Include them in the process. We need more dialogue with our children. We need to go back to some of the roots of where we come from. Uh, have dinner with your children. And stop using the microwave have dinner with them, teach them how to cook, teach them. Those are times and those are value times that are missed in our community because of the hurry, hustle, bustle in which 
our whole world has come into. We need to take the time, have those dinners with our children. That's where dialogue really takes place. Not just grab a piece of bread and run and do something else, but take the time and let, let's raise our children instead of having others and society and the woes and TV raise our children. It sounds like what you're saying is that it's twofold, really. It's the support that we need from the community and the city and um, new stakeholders and the government, but we need to kind of look at how we're running our own family, too, and it needs to be from all sides, it's if important. I'm hearing you correctly. Um, I, I want to ask you about the optimism, uh, first of all, in the response, because, um, I mean, j just a horrendous tragedy that befell East Buffalo. Um, what, what kind of response have you seen from people within the community and people from outside? And, and what are the bright spots? What is the encouragement that you have seen already in that response? Well, one of the things that I've seen is that uh, we often respond well to tragedy. We are people who, who respond to problematic situations when we should have been doing this all along. And, and it's, it's sad, uh, but it's here. And people are responding. They are welcoming. Uh, especially during uh, that tragedy, people came from all over. Uh, we've had prayer vigils. We've had uh, opportunities to come and just embrace one another. Uh, and I am so ecstatic that we did not tear up our community. And I believe that's what they wanted to see. They wanted to see riots. They wanted to see breaking of windows. They wanted to see flipping of cars. But what happened was that a community uh, was, came together. And that community from all over uh, Buffalo and Western New York, we came together. We are uh, upset that this took place in our community. But we should have been uh, proactive and not complacent, not settling for the things that are current situations right now but we should have been proactive. So uh, there's a lot of hope that is coming out of this. There's a lot of uh, people who've never talked to one another, who've never uh, assembled with one another. One another. So we're, we're seeing that synergy of love uh, being reestablished, and I want to say it like that, and people from all over are coming and they're welcoming. We're having food uh, come to our community uh, from various sources, and that is warranted. Uh, we've come together and galvanized to where the community, uh, although TOPS was closed during those times for, for the remodeling of TOPS, uh, they were still there uh, to help bring them uh, the food access that they needed. Uh, the NFTA was key in providing free transportation. Uh, TOPS was key in providing uh, uh, other resources as well for the other community organizations that were, are in our community. You've seen a lot of our community organizations come together. Um, uh, Mad Dads were there. Uh, the Peacemakers were there. Uh, the Buffalo Urban League, the Resource Center, has been reestablished uh, and to have its prominence. The, the NAACP, uh, Johnny B. Wiley, everybody is coming together. Uh, the religious communities have been coming together to provide support uh, for the community. So it's been an overwhelming uh, uh, support that has been coming, but you know, it took a tragedy for it to happen. These are things that we should be doing on a regular basis that can help eradicate hate and let people know white supremacy does not have a foothold in our community. But we also need to look at, when you go to Google, you'll find that when it talks about uh, white supremacy, it talks about uh, racism, we're high on the list New York State, Buffalo's high on the list uh, when it talks about those things. So we have to do more uh, to make sure that we're proactive in eradicating hate, eradicating white supremacy, and eradicating the racial divide. And finally, Reverend, what is your best hope for East Buffalo, big picture, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line? What do you want to see? I want to see businesses. I want to see grocery stores. I want to see another Apollo Theater where we can come down and just have uh, celebrations. Uh, we do have dancing in the street uh, once a year. Uh, we have block parties. But I want to see the thriving of Jefferson 
uh, to where it once was, where we had businesses, uh, we had commerce, um, and we had the local barbershops that are there where people would gather. Uh, those are things that can happen again. Uh, young entrepreneurs there, community center. We don't have a community center uh, on the Jefferson Avenue Strip. We have the Resource Center, which was the old YMCA, but we don't have a community center. We need a senior center on the east side as well. A lot of churches have been uh, doing what they need to do to bring resources and to be those centers uh, for the community, but we don't have any dedicated center. We don't have a, a, a dedicated uh, gymnasium. I know the Resource Center, they do have one, but all of east side of Buffalo, you, you don't have those, those areas uh, where individuals can come and, re and release that pent up energy you know, we have the Johnny B. Wiley, but, you know, we need more. We need more activities for our young people uh, because if they don't, uh, they'll, they'll be liable to just do other things. But we need more opportunities. That's the most important word, more opportunities to survive and thrive. It should be like Hurdle. It should be like, like South Park. It should be like Elmwood. Those are... Uh, communities that have businesses and they they have commerce. How come Jefferson can't be that again? I would like to see that. I would like to live to see that. Right. <laughs> right. You want to see it? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to live to see that. In our lifetimes. Uh, yeah. God willing. Absolutely. Anything else you want to share about uh, the commission or about your goals or anything else? Well, I what I want to do and in, in, uh, I want to share the goals of the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to uh, let people know that again we will be having community forums in which we will embrace the community uh, for their opinions because it has affected us all. I would like to read the commission uh, 914, I'm sorry, the 514 Memorial Commission mission statement. The mission of the 514 Memorial Commission is to respectfully develop a living and lasting memorial that will honor the survivors and the lives of those lost during the racially motivated mass shooting in East Buffalo. The living memorial will embrace the wishes of families, honor the legacy of those loved ones, and provide ongoing transparency and comfort to members of the community. The 514 Memorial Commission will follow a process that will help accomplish this mission. The commission will be transparent as decisions are being made. The commission will be inclusive and respectful and involve members of the families. The commission will engage the public in the comments and input. The commission uh, will involve the Jefferson Avenue community and communities at large. The commission will fully vet the type of memorial and the site of the memorial. The commission will educate the public about race relations and civil rights. And lastly, the commission will design a, will designate a person, me, uh, who will be accountable uh, for community and for public uh, announcements for that. So it, it's, it's all encompassed, it's all inclusive, and um, I, I take great pride to be on this commission because I know um, the work is, is not just a one day, it's not just a one week, one month, uh, not even a one year. But I, I want to see our community uh, have something that they can look to, look at, reflect, uh, live on from after seeing this and look and say, we need to end racism. And not in a violent way, but in a way in which uh, it will be, speak dignity to our people. It's beautiful. And it's a tall order. So you really cannot say really, as far as a timeline goes, it sounds like your process is going to be very organic. Um, has anyone imposed on you? It needs to be done by such and such a date? Well, they said if you had a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're, looking, we're looking at, at announcing something a little later on. But we want to get all of our information and uh, then we can be more strategic and more accurate um, in the date. But if it has to go and be pushed back a little further, 
excuse me, uh, I shared with the group, we only have one time to get this right. right. There's no do-overs. Right. So we want to make sure that we put what's best for Buffalo. And how many commission members altogether? We have, I believe it's 10. Is it 10? I okay. believe it's 10. And you've met a few times already? We've met, we've met uh, yes, for the last two months we've been meeting um, roughly twice a, twice a month. And we're trying to get everything all set. And uh, we're working through this. We have individual family members uh, of the uh, loved ones who have, uh, who have been victimized uh, on the committee. And so it's, uh, it's a very good committee. And, and we're going to get it done. We're going to do right, the right job the first time.